Hello friends, good morning. Well, it's morning for me anyway. <laughs> um, here we are again. Um, chapter 25, Lotus Sutra. Uh, let us do Daimoku Sancho together. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn around again because it just feels right. No. Myo ho renge kyo nam. 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 Myo ho renge kyo. Namo myo horenge go 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 All right So a few words before I jump into it uh, the scholarship of the Lotus Sutra you may have noticed by now, in fact, I'm quite certain that you have, that the beginning chapters of the Lotus Sutra, I'm not talking about innumerable meaning sutra, although that's, in, that's also part of what I'm saying here. Um, the, the beginning chapters of the Lotus Sutra have a lot to do with the teaching method. How did Shakyamuni teach? skillful means okay uh by example by parable by simile by uh naming convention by hyperbole and then it isn't long before we get into the real meat what i would say the meat of the lotus sutra especially for us in this modern age uh, the whole thing was very important 2600 years ago and it still is but um for us, we are the bodhisattvas of the earth. We are tasked with living the life of bodhisattva in order to liberate ourselves from the things that cause us suffering, the, the delusions, the, the uh, clouded thinking, the, the, uh, uh, the ignorance of not really seeing things as they truly are. Uh, so the bodhisattva way is the way to clear the mind and to get to this Buddha way, the Buddha mind, okay? So that is the the meat of the Lotus Sutra. From chapter 10 to chapter 22, everything is about understanding what a Bodhisattva is, how to behave in this human life, uh, how the Buddha mind is achievable in this human life, doesn't require that you leave this body, that you experience death or extinction, those are extremes that are unnecessary in order to attain enlightenment. This is what enlightenment is like. This is how you live your life. This is how you help others. I mean, every the whole Bodhisattva way is dissected throughout those 12 chapters, 12, 13 chapters. Now we've entered another phase. These latter chapters from chapter 23 on, and now we're on chapter 25. Uh, this chapter 25 is, uh, as I reread it before this video, I thought, <laughs> this kind of encapsulates, uh, not encapsulates, because it doesn't contain everything, but uh, my teaching method, my adopted teaching method, my the teaching method that seems to have obviated itself in me as i observe myself you may observe me differently but for instance um the way i explain the naming conventions why a bodhisattva has a certain name why a buddha has a certain name why that's part of the storytelling in order to uh, uh, elucidate meaning right because it's not about the words remember over and over again it's not about the words it's about the meaning. It's not about the finger pointing at the moon. It's about the moon. 
the moon itself, right? So the teachings are a skillful means. They are a finger pointing at the moon. Seek the moon. Seek the meaning. Seek the underlying truth. Okay. So with that said, it made me laugh, actually, because uh, uh, I had forgotten about this, uh, the form of this particular sutra. Um, oh, and I also wanted to say this. Um, this is part of why I'm I, I, I constantly talking about the scholarship of Buddhism. Who wrote it? How it was wrote? Yes, those things are historically important, but we can get really caught up in the nitty-gritty of that, just like following words. It's not that important. What's important is to understand the teachings. So we can see that thousands of years ago, Kumara Jiva, who was translating a lot of this Pali, Sanskrit, Prakrit, uh, uh, it, uh, translations into writing of uh, verbal sermons and uh, commentaries and scholarship uh, into Chinese for the broader uh, spreading of the teachings uh, was faced with some documents that either no longer existed or only existed in previous translations from like Tibet and uh, and other areas that had uh translated previous indian translators who had translated previous uh pali or sanskrit uh translations of sermons and there were some that he had eschewed and thought this this is too this was created outside the scholarship this was just kind of tacked on by somebody who had good intentions, but it's obvious that, uh, you know, they didn't follow the strict uh, paradigms of uh, Buddhism and Shakyamuni's teachings. So I'm not going to include this in the translation. Um, it's also obvious that there are things he included uh, that are obviously, to me and other scholars, uh, of Tibetan origin, uh, origin. Tibetan um folklore and ancient um uh thinking um is, still retains a lot of magical thought magical type of uh, uh but 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 they may center uh they may have a very powerful center a very powerful thing to say that is very uh shakyamuni teaching like uh, that that ex explores and explains an aspect of Shakyamuni's teachings that is quite uh, enlightening. However, they tend to tack on the little magical things, you know, like the word incantation that keeps coming up. Um, that's Shakyamuni never, never talked about incantations, okay? Um, but when it crops up, it's like. Uh, Okay, what are you really trying to say? And if there's a kernel of really useful truth in, in that, well, Kumrana Jiva thought, um, yeah, this, uh, this is worthy of being in the collection of the lotus. It has to relate specifically to what the lotus sutra is teaching. The lotus sutra is teaching us the Bodhisattva way, the ultimate practice, the ultimate way to achieve enlightenment in this lifetime, in this current moment. Okay. So, uh, we don't have to deal with that in chapter 25. Um, it's coming up though. We're going to hit a little bit of it. Um, but I think it's more interesting to understand that the Lotus Sutra is a collection uh, focused around a specific teaching. Kind of like if you went to university and you got into advanced studies, okay, and, and uh, uh, you studied chemistry and you studied biology and you studied all sorts of physics and, and the math, obviously, to understand all of those things. And then you start getting on the cusp, the cutting edge of uh, particle physics and the uh, unification theory, quantum gravity, quantum mechanics, quantum theory, and um, 
uh, and trying to meld together Einstein's great uh, general relativity with quantum mechanical truths, the very large and the very small, we still in science are trying to marry the two and get a, an answer to everything. Because if, the, if there are very clear answers, then they should agree, they should correlate. Um, and we're getting pretty close in the scientific community. It's a, it's fascinating to me as a Buddhist to see how much more and more over the decades, uh, the science is mirroring what uh, Shakyamuni has been saying all along. And the scholarship of Buddhism has been saying all along. Um, uh, and you know, others, the, the Taoists and the, uh, and others have have had little clues and uh, um, and systematized uh, some of that into daily life, uh, but Buddhism by far uh, uh, coalesces all of that into a real uh, um, complete picture, uh, and science is more and more agreeing with it. It's really fascinating. But anyway, um, so. What I have tended to do, in, in, uh, as, as I observe it, is to demystify and give you tools of understanding so that you can see through the hyperbole and actually use it to help you understand, which, is, was, which was the intent all along, right? So, here we go. The universal gateway of the Bodhisattva regarder of the cries of the world. There's a long name in convention, right? At that time, the Bodhisattva inexhaustible mind. <laughs> what do you think the Bodhisattva inexhaustible mind is? Is it some guy with an inexhaustible mind? Of course not. Bodhisattva inexhaustible mind is a representative characterization of our constant doubt in our constant questioning and our constant curiosity. It's a representation, bodhisattva, of our samsaric mind, or at least one of its potentials, which is the key here. So, for all those who have inexhaustible minds, because we all do, got up from his seat, bared his right shoulder, I see, he bared his right shoulder. We haven't heard that in previous sutras, right? So this, again, this is starting to sound a little Tibetan-influenced. Put his palms together facing the Buddha and said, World-honored one, for what reason does the Bodhisattva regarder of the cries of the world have the name regarder of the cries of the world? Buya. The very question that I've been posing all along with you is about to be answered by somebody other than me. So let's hear what he has to say. The Buddha answered, inexhaustible mind bodhisattva, to all of your curiosities. Good son, if there were countless hundreds of thousands of billions of living beings experienced suffering and agony who heard of this regarder of the scribes of the world bodhisattva and wholeheartedly called his name regarder of the cries of the world bodhisattva would immediately hear their cries and all of them would be freed all right what does that mean is regarder of the cries of the world a super being with a cape floating in the air with an uh, with a, a shirt that instead of S, like Superman, says, uh, I guess it would be RCW, regarder of the cries of the world. <laughs> no, of course not. Regarder of the cries of the world is another aspect of the human mind. It's our compassion. Now, here's the interesting thing that's going to happen with this. He's going to take that personalization, that characterization of that aspect, one aspect of our human mind, and he's going to turn it into a tool for us to use for ourselves. This is masterful. Listen. If anyone who embraces the name of regarder of the cries of the world bodhisattva, embraces the name Again, it's not a person. 
It's, it's the idea of the garter of the cries of the world, Bodhisattva, falls into a great fire. The fire will not burn that person due to the divine authority and power of that Bodhisattva. If anyone carried away by a flood calls his name, that person will immediately reach some shallows. If there are hundreds of thousands of billions of beings in search of gold, silver, lapis lazuli, shell, seashell, agate, coral, amber, pearls, and other treasures go out to the sea and have their ship blown off course in a fierce wind to a land of the ogre demons. And if among them there is even a single person who calls the name of regarder of Christ of the world, Bodhisattva, all of those people will be saved from difficulty caused by the ogres. This is why the Bodhisattva is named regarder of the Christ of the world. Now there was a clue right there. Even if only one. Or if someone faced with immediate attack calls the name of regarder of the cries of the world of Bodhisattva, the swords and clubs of the attackers will instantly break into pieces and they will be freed from the danger. Big ass clue. Okay, sorry. What is it? What does this mean? So, it means that in our heads, in our minds, not our head head, but in our minds. If we embrace the name, if we embrace the idea of regarder of cries of the world, as we are crying out ourselves, we imagine this compassionate part of our own minds as an ability, as an imbued, uh, powerful thing. We invest in that part of our mind. And we see the very same cries of fear that we feel. When he says attacks, have you ever had anyone say something to you that just made your heart fall from your chest to your gut? We've all felt that, right? For different reasons. Especially if somebody's breaking up with us in a relationship. Or we love somebody or care about somebody or something greatly. And they say something to us that for whatever reason is deeply hurtful. Our heart just, we call it, our heart sinks. We feel it bodily. Oh. But regarder of the cries of the world, Bodhisattva mental state. Remember, this is all a mental exercise. It's about training our minds. So when we consider in whatever great pain we are feeling emotionally or whatever, that this pain that we're feeling represents and is represented by countless others in the world. Countless others are feeling this right now. Whether they're starving in, Ethi in, in mid Africa, or they're or they're being threatened by the mob, or or they're they've just lost a child, you men out there, you can understand the feeling of a mother losing a child. That's amazing. If you can take your own pain, everyone now, not just men. And see it immediately as something that the whole world, all of existence, feels. You will call upon that aspect of your mind called regarders of the cries of the world. And when you do, your own cries will feel appeased your own cries will be diminished. You'll understand. Because you'll call on your own compassionate bodhisattva, regarder of the cries of the world. Do you see how complex and yet elegant that is? So when we say Buddhism is about attitude, we're not just talking about how you feel about some thing or some other. We're talking about your own attitude about yourself and your feelings. Yes, about others, but about your own emotional drama, your own samsaric existence. 
is your enlightenment. Your own experience in samsara allows you the portal to understand that this experience is not only yours. It is universal. And when you see that it's universal, suddenly your struggle with it becomes lighter, lesser, more observable, and less personal. Do you see how elegant that is? That is the core of everyday Buddhism right there. So we're not talking about the textbook how to behave as a bodhisattva and how to practice the bodhisattva way anymore. But we are talking about how, a way in our samsaric mind to understand what it is to be ourselves bodhisattvas. Do you see the shift that's go happening here in the lotus? This is extending the teaching to give you personal hotbeds of understanding in your own heart-mind. This is, this is tremendous. This is very eye-opening. Wouldn't you agree? Now the hyperbole, he continues. He really wants you to get this. Even if the 3,000 great thousandfold world were full of satyrs and ogres seeking to torment people, these evil spirits, hearing the people call the name of regarders of the cries of the world bodhisattva with their wicked eyes, they would not even be able to see them, much less heard them. So now he's not talking about you, he's talking about people. What is he saying here? The people that you enable, the people that you teach, the people that you bring to this Buddhist realization. If they too can embrace this idea regardless of the cries of the world bodhisattva, their own compassionate nature, when they feel fears, when they feel put upon, when they feel endangered, when they feel victimed, victimhood, let them understand the victimhood of all things, all phenomena, and their victimhood will turn into a, a, a tool of empowerment. It will actually strengthen them. What an amazingly powerful, and it's all done with the mind. This is why I've said so many times, Buddhism is a science of the mind. Maybe that's because I'm so attached to science. I appreciate science. I appreciate the, the perspicacity and the, and the minuteness uh, of uh, science. And I see it in Buddhism. I see how it allows for nothing to squirm out of the, uh, of the scholarship, of the understanding. It's all here. Right? Suppose the 3,000 great powers were well, blah, 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 inexhaustible mind. <laughs> speaking to us, speaking to you. Such are the awesome divine powers of the great one, regardless of the cries of the world, Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva, not a person. Your ability, your ability to consider others. Others, not just people. Other, other. Your ability to experience other is bodhisattva. If any living beings were are afflicted with a great deal of lust, let them keep in mind and revere regard of the cries of the world bodhisattva and they will be freed from their desire. If they have great deal of anger and rage, let them keep in mind and revere regard of the cries of the world bodhisattva and they will be freed from their anger. Wow, huge. How many, how many of us even if we don't act out, act out to ourselves, our anger. How does that anger give us ulcers, give it precipitates even physical ailments as well as mental ailments, as well as depression and, 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 and victimhood and so on and so forth, on and on and on. 
if we could grasp our own anguish from that anger as a condition, number one, as a condition that is prevalent in everything, number two, as a condition that is lamentable, fixable, and that we want to assuage, minimize, and appease in everything, how much less would our anger drive our emotions and our depression and our victimhood? That's what this is saying. This is within everybody's capacity. It is simply a shift, a small shift in the mind. Can you do it? Even a little bit. Because if you do it just even a tiny little bit, you'll get better at it. The more you do it, the more it will seem like not doing it makes no sense. You'll catch yourself in the depths of anger, depression, lust, whatever it is that's gripping you, that you, you're, you're accustomed to saying in your life, I can't do anything about this. It has me under its thumb. It controls me. No, it doesn't. You're allowing it to. So Bodhisattva, regarder of the cries of the world, says, think about this. Everything goes through what you're going through right now. Everything. Would you want to help all those others not feel this? You don't really wish this on everyone, do you? Alleviate it even just a little bit? Wow, just thinking about that, don't you feel a little bit better? Keep working on it. Keep doing that. At some point, you'll be able to arrest yourself in the midst of doing it and go, <sighs> it, it may bring you to tears. Not from an anguish point of view, but from a beauty point of view. From even a question of, why does this continue to happen? But even the why is a compassionate cry of the world. Everybody's asking why. Because we're doing it to ourselves. Stop. Take a breath. Regarder of the cries of the world, Bodhisattva. Inexhaustible mind, regarder of the cries of the world, Bodhisattva, has such great divine powers and can abundantly benefit the living. Therefore, all the living should constantly keep this Bodhisattva in mind. Even if a woman wants to have a son and worship, worships and makes offerings to regard her of the cries of the world, Bodhisattva, she will bear a son. Blessed merit, virtue, and wisdom, right? Attitude, attitude. If she wants to have a son, but she thinks of all other females, the female energy, the female entity in the world that wants to procreate, that beauty, that immensity minimizes her anguish. She begins right away to see the beauty of that, the immensity of that, the awesomeness of that. <sighs> She's overwhelmed. She may just break into laughter, crying, emotional, but released, released from the suffering of want, realizing the amazing process of life. Do you see? This is regarder of the cries of Bodhisattva, the world Bodhisattva. This is our ability. This Bodhisattva is a chunk of our mind. Right? It is a really essential tool to understanding our Bodhisattva practice. For those who need somebody in the body of a Shravaka in order to be saved, he appears as a Shravaka and teaches the Dharma for them. For those who need someone as the body of a Dharma king, right? We've heard this before. 
that this capability in our mind allows us to be for others and by virtue of them being a mirror for us to be for others now what's going on now hello hope you can still see me okay computer's doing some weird things battery ran low I messed up again sorry about that okay but see now he goes on to say for those who need this for those who need that we appear this we appear that that bodhisattva that capacity in our minds allows us to be for others what we wouldn't normally be for ourselves we would call upon and this again study 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 because now the more we study the more we have tools to help others the more we have tools to help others the more we enlighten ourselves the more we awaken to our own potential <sighs> nothing makes us grow faster than to help another being nothing this is the bodhisattva way this is the way shakyamuni wanted everyone to practice this is the way that leads us to the direct experience of buddhahood enlightenment awakening this is what he experienced this is what he wants all of us to experience why because this is how he is being the bodhisattva all right If you are pursued by bad people and thrown down from a diamond mountain, keep in mind cry regarders powers and not a hair will be injured. If you are surrounded by robbers, each with knife ready to use on you, keep in mind cry regarders powers and their hearts will become compassionate. There it is, the word compassion. It's in the verse section. And because I seem to be having all kinds of computer problems, I'm concerned that you're not going to be able to. Uh, this video might be a little messed up. I hope not. So I'm going to let you read the verse section. I'll just finish the very end here. Equipped with all blessings, viewing all with compassionate eyes, his ocean of accumulated blessings is immeasurable. Heads should be bowed to him. Then the Bodhisattva earth holder rose from his seat, went before the Buddha, and said to him, World honored one, if any living being hears this Bodhisattva regarder of the cries of the world chapter, hears of the freedom of his actions and divine powers of the revelation of the universal gateway, it should be known that this person's blessings are not few. While the Buddha taught this chapter on the universal gateway, all 84,000 living beings in the assembly became determined to reach the incomparable state of supreme awakening. This is the gateway. This is the gateway. This bodhisattva practice, this compassionate look at your own demons, your own emotional states, your own fears, your own anger, your own ignorance, your own stupidity, your own anything that's going on with you immediately extrapolated to being in everybody else. They're experiencing it too. Maybe not at this precise moment, but listen, with going on 8 billion peoples on this planet, you can pretty much bet, a solid bet, that there's hundreds of thousands of people experiencing what you're experiencing in this very moment right now. Include them in your thinking. Include them in your desire for release from that suffering. Include them and you will be included. And once you're included, suddenly it becomes a shared experience. And with the power of so many consciousnesses can be so easily overcome, pushed away, minimized, even become fuel to empower this is the gateway to your buddha mind your buddha awakening your buddha experience right now that's chapter 25 
Next chapter I don't even want to introduce. Just by looking at the title in here. I got to read that puppy. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I love you guys. I really do. Let's put this Bodhisattva way into our lives. Let's click that capability that we all have into focus. Let's make it operate. Let's get that app working. Okay? Damoku Sancho, thank you. Nam Myo Renge Kyo Nam Myo Renge Kyo Nam Myo Renge Kyo Thank you so, so much. Best of fortunes to you. I'll see you next time. Thank you.